there are a couple other limits we can put in the game. We can put in a max jump ceiling. Um, basically just the same way we put in the floor or the wall. Just put it in here and the player can't go past it. But there is one limit that we absolutely need to put in the game if there's going to be holes in the floor. Just like when I fell off the left side, if I fall down this hole, I'm going to fall forever. So what we need to do is put in a an area, a limit, at the bottom. If the player falls down the hole, we want them to reset at this position, back at the beginning of the game, or maybe back where they were before they fell off the, the hole. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a game empty. Game object, create empty. We're going to attach it to our first person controller. And we're going to call this spawn point. Okay. We're going to go to the little gear over here and a reset position. And then we're going to de or deactivate it or detach it from the first person controller. So this is the point at which the player is going to spawn. Okay. The next thing we need to do is create a prefab of the controller so we can create a new one at that position. Uh, we're going to go to Assets, right-click, and Create Prefab. Now this prefab we're going to pl call Player, and we're going to drag our first-person controller on top of it. Okay. So now we've got this game guy, and he is a prefab. So what we're going to do, and this is going to be tricky, I mind you, very tricky, is we're going to make a script and when the first person controller dies, that target is going to disappear on the camera. So what we're going to do is immediately respawn a new player, move the camera back to the spawn point, and reset the target with the new game object. Okay? So let's go into our scripts. We're going to right click and create a JavaScript. And we're going to call this player respawn. Okay, if we open that up in Mono Develop. Okay, what we're going to do to start is we're going to need a couple of objects. We're going to say var player is a game object. This is just so that we can make a new player. We're going to need the respawn point, so we're going to say var spawn point. This is going to be a transform with a capital T. Transform. Okay. And we're going to try to reference the camera without a variable. I'm not sure how that's going to work, but we're going to give it a try. Okay. So at start, we're not really going to do anything in there. And we're probably not going to do anything in the update either. What we're going to use is function on trigger enter. This is probably new to you, but I will discuss why we're using on trigger enter when we get back into Unity. The floor that we're going to put underneath the level is going to be a, a box, much like the other boxes, except you're going to be able to walk into it and then it's going to activate this code. Okay? If you if you don't understand triggers, I have a video out there on triggers on my channel. I recommend going to watch it. It's very educational and fun. So let's get started with this. On Trigger Enter, what we're going to do is kill the current player. We're going to say um, when the trigger gets entered, we're going to grab other and then we're going to make a collider. Okay, we're going to say destroy other dot game object. Okay, so we can test this right now actually, just this script all by itself. As we're stepping through it, we'll make sure that it compiles correctly. What we're going to do is grab one of these floors. Actually, you know what, let's just make a new cube. Game object, create other cube. And we're going to drag it down the area we want, use the scale tool, and expand it all the way across the map. I know what you're thinking, oh well we just need to cover the hole, but if for any reason at all the player figures out a way to fall through the floor, 
we need to be able to reset that. Okay, so we're going to just drag it all the way across, and then we're going to set the Z to 30 so that it spans all the way. Okay, we don't want the player to be able to see this area, and we're going to need it a little bit thicker, so we're actually going to set the Y to 10. And we're going to move it down, and then we're going to turn off the mesh render. In the box collider, we're going to click is trigger. So this will cause our on trigger enter code to execute. Okay. Right. So now we're going to grab our player respawn script, put it on here, drag our player object, which is in our prefab here, and our spawn point here. So now when we play the game, we shouldn't get any errors, and if I run over here and fall in the hole, you see we get an error from the camera because the target has disappeared. Okay, So that part's working. Now what we need to do is create a new player. So we're going to say RP which is of type game object is equal to instantiate which is a fancy programming terminology for make a new one of these we're gonna make a new player we're gonna set its position at spawn point dot position and we're gonna make its rotation what it should standardly be by saying quaternion dot identity Okay, so that should create a brand new player at the spawn point position. But what we need to do next is go ahead and uh, let's test this script because we're testing it one step at a time. We've got our player, we've got our spawn point, so if we press play, actually, oh, I misspelled instantiate. Now let's try it. go. There's an N in there, folks. Instantiate. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move my player over here just so that uh, you guys don't have to watch me walk half a mile to get there. So the player spawns and we fall down the hole and he dies. Well, you see we get a new player. But the camera is still trying to access the original one, so what we need to do is give the camera the new uh, the new player to stare at. So we're going to say camera dot main dot. Actually, you know what we're going to do? We're going to need that script, so we're going to say var sf. That's for smooth follow. Is equal to camera dot main dot get component smooth follow two so now we're, we've grabbed the smooth follow script so what we need to do is in the smooth follow two script we need to change this target to our new game object okay but you can see target is set as a transform and not as a game object. Okay? Well, instantiate creates game objects, not transforms. So this is where the data types of Unity get to be a little tricky. So what we're going to say is sf.target is equal to p.transform. So we're going to grab our new player object here we're going to grab its transform property and assign it to the smooth follow to target after we've destroyed the old one. So if we save this and we try to run this game and we fall down the hole, our new player is spawned, the camera flies over, and we try it once again. Run over and fall in the hole and we respawn again. 
Now, the cool thing about doing it this way is that we have a spawn point, right? If, for any reason, let's say we put in a trigger over here, let's just go ahead and do it. Um, actually, you know what? We'll save that for next time. Checkpoints. How to move your spawn point for checkpoints in the game so the player doesn't have to repeat the entire level over and over and over again. Okay, so we're going to leave off here. We've gone ahead and put in a couple of barriers. We've made a roof. We've added the moving platforms, and we've uh, we've made the, the kill box or the death zone when the player falls in a hole and respawn the player. That's an awful lot. This is probably going to be a quite long video. We were just supposed to talk about limits, but the bottom area is a limit, so we've gone ahead and done that. Thanks for watching, and uh, while the credits roll out, I'm going to try and uh, try and get back on this platform. Thanks for watching.